Welcome to the C-Suite at the Open video series with TMX Group. I'm Caroline Hunter, Head of Company Services based out of Toronto. Joining me today is Kim Anthony, CEO of AvivaGen, a life sciences company focused on developing and commercializing products for livestock, companion animal, and human applications. AvivaGen trades on TSX Venture under the ticker symbol VIV. Welcome, Kim. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Caroline. I thought we would begin by having you tell us about AvivaGen. AvivaGen is the result of a research program at the National Research Council in Ottawa and Charlottetown, uh, which was subsequently spun off into the company. It was a new product discovery, um, and I emphasize discovery rather than, than invention. We discovered what happens when you completely oxidize beta carotene and the resulting product has some terrific biological impacts on the body and the body being all animals, including humans, with an immune system. So what this product does, and it was a, the result of many, many years of, of, uh, of research here and abroad, it has an impact basically threefold. One is on the immune system, which, in, which includes something called immune priming, where the sensors in the body that identify pathogens or bacteria are elevated and multiplied. In other words, your immune system picks up, identifies, and sends an immune response much earlier. So anybody that has an impaired immune system will benefit from this. The other aspect is it has a very powerful anti-inflammatory effect. So anybody or any animal that is suffering from either chronic inflammation, which are most illnesses, or the body's immune response generating an inflammatory response, it controls that and reduces it. The third thing is, is a, a very uh, terrific uh, improvements to gut health. I won't get into the technical sides of it, but it, it's both leaving more room for, for good bacteria, cryptobilis ratio, etc. So, so what does this mean? And we're continuing to discover more applications. But in the first instance, our largest business is the livestock business. Mm -hmm. And as you may know, the number one source of antibiotic, antibiotic resistant bacteria is through livestock feed and in fact 70 to 80 percent of the world's antibiotics are used at low levels in livestock feed to accelerate growth we call them agps antibiotics for growth as growth promoters those are systematically being banned first in in the, the eu then in other countries most recently this past summer in china um, product by product, uh, by antibiotic by antibiotic in the States and elsewhere in the world are following suit. If our product is added to livestock feed, you can get rid of the low levels of antibiotic, the non-therapeutic uses of antibiotics without losing any production because the, the animal's immune systems take over much more aggressively. So that's that's use number one in livestock. In other areas of livestock where they are already antibiotic free, we're the number one um, antibiotic alternative and, and really do outpace the other alternatives in the mar our competitive landscape. But the other side of it is those animals like dairy cattle that aren't allowed to take antibiotics if they get sick, sickness prevention, like mastitis prevention, is a big thing so that you don't have to take the cow out of production. So we are seeing, as we go through this, our current journey of turning from a research company and commercializing our products, we're seeing various applications. So in our first market that we entered, which was the Philippines, it was as an antibiotic replacement. And that's true of many of the, of the countries, including uh, Mexico, and the primary markets being poultry and swine. However, a very large study was done in, uh, in New Zealand following a proof of concept study in China on dairy cattle and the prevention of sickness 
primarily mastitis, but also other infections in producing cattle with tremendous results. And so um, we got our first large committed contract um, with a company in Mexico called Industrialis Melder. And that's a 10 ton order, which is fairly significant, which will double our sales for next year. And we're seeing many companies in the latter stage of on-farm um, trials that that uh, I think you will see in our next fiscal year a tremendous lift in our sales and a transformation of the company from from a, a, a speculative company to a more robust and possibly even profitable company in the coming year. That's on the livestock side. The same action from the same product is being used for companion animal treats, and we are so they are sold in a joint venture with a product under the product brand Dr. Tobias, with a company called Mimi's Rock on Amazon, and that business just got launched last year, and it is going very well. We also sell some of our own branded product offshore through Taiwan in, in stores and soon in Mexico and Brazil. The other thing that's very interesting is that we have started selling it to a pet food manufacturer in Taiwan who is adding our product to pet food and seeing a tremendous impact on their customers' dogs. And dogs are easier than cats, but, but it works on cats as well. And finally, least but not least, we will be launching again with Mimi's Rock under the Dr. Tobias brand uh, a human product. So you can imagine in this day and age, uh, a product that really significantly enhances your immune system and acts as an anti-inflammatory is a welcome product in this environment. So that's that's basically what our, our company does. We manufacture our product in, in Taipei under strict uh, guidelines in a GMP facility with FAMIQS certification and uh, and we ship it worldwide. Oh, thank you. Uh, those are some fascinating and wide reaching applications for your product. Um, looking to the future, what are some of the catalysts that may positively affect your business? Well, we're going to see, you know, it's going to be several fold. The one is the launching of the human business, which I mentioned. Uh, the other is some some significant ramping up on our sales side, um, which because each of these customers are very large, um, their go no go decisions have a big impact on us. So so to the extent that we have um, several of these customers uh, contracting to purchase the product in the livestock area over the next year, that will be uh, that will be very significant. And lastly, we are looking to partner on the livestock side with some some large players to address some of the larger markets that we can't realistically address ourselves. We can make sales, but we can't realistically address, such as China, um, the U.S., and uh, and uh, later on Europe. Okay, so Kim, how would you then summarize Aviva Gen's value proposition for the investment community? Well, like many companies, it was looked to by the dream. You know, what's the total addressable market? You know, is this a powerful product? And then you go through a bit of a valley as you do the hand-to-hand -hand combat of generating sales, proving the product in the marketplace. And we are just coming through that. So there is a and should be a significant change in how the company's looked at over the next really two to six months um, in terms of generating a significant volume of sales, uh, partnerships and new product applications continuing to, uh, to unfold. Finally, what does being listed on TSX Venture mean to you and your stakeholders? Well, it's been a very good experience for all of us. I mean, clearly for early stage companies like ours, it has been a source of liquidity, a source of capital, source of exposure. It's much better regarded than you know, things like pink sheets in the US. And it is a great launching pad uh, to go onto the big board later on. So I would highly recommend it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the, 
the painful experience of being a public company, and uh, but it, the benefits are truly significant. I couldn't agree with you more. Kim, it was a pleasure hosting you on today's C-Suite at the Open. We look forward to hearing more from AvivaGen in the future. That you will. Thank you, Carol.